This is coaching video number two. We're going to talk a little bit more about how you're going to manage your class and how you manage upper body pulling, strength and conditioning, and a little bit about collaborative work rather than competitive work. We've mentioned this in the previous video, but ensure that always when you're doing stuff, your technique is never sacrificed for having to do reps or more work. If the technique is being sacrificed, then you have to stop. And it means that you've reached your limit of work. There's no point in doing things that are less than perfect because it just means that you're either injuring yourself, you're gonna hurt yourself, or you're just trying to do more for the sake of just doing more. You can get a lot more benefit out of resting and then going back and doing more work, but with perfect technique. Also, make sure that whatever you're doing, especially with your students, you keep safe. Now, this can have lots of different ideas behind what safe means, but it, you know, one thing to keep in mind is the fact that if you have a brand, brand new beginner, you don't want to throw them on the bar and make, you know, give them a ludicrous amount of weight because you don't know what their ability level is. So therefore, you know, you can injure them quite a lot give them a very gradual scale. We mentioned this in the last video, um, and that way it will remain safe. Something that a lot of coaches do not do, and that is plan. Ensure that you're planning your classes. Planning is fundamental. There kind of is this idea that, you know, winging it and, you know, you, you've done this a lot and your experience, uh, you know, kind of holds you um, in good stead, and that's fine, but if you plan I guarantee that your classes and your session, especially with things like uh, conditioning and strength work, um, is gonna make your classes much, much better. Um, if you've thought about how you're gonna motivate your students, then it's just gonna make it a lot more enjoyable. Moving into the main part of this. Now, I'm sure that there are going to be a lot of other disciplines and sports that won't agree with this but this is coming from a parkour background and a movement-based background. And that is that you want to make sure that your classes are collaborative and cooperative, not competitive. Now, the, the reason that I'm saying this is because if you start introducing competition into your classes and make it competitive, you are gonna alienate some people. And the reason it's going to alienate those people is because they don't, not everybody wants to compete. And in fact, a lot of people that come to movement classes and parkour classes, they're not interested in having to compete against others. They're more interested in how they are able to move and how they can increase their ability, not have to compare themselves against someone else or have other people compare what they can do against them. So competitive is not a great way of training in, for classes for this kind of stuff. Think more about being collaborative and cooperative. So you're helping each other and you're going towards common goals rather than competing. Now I understand that there are a lot of disciplines that are competitive um, and this is absolutely fine for them and that's what more what their discipline is focused on that's perfectly fine. But for the type of training that I do and for uh, movement and parkour based stuff, we try to get away from the competitive stuff because a lot of other people do it and we prefer to try to incorporate everybody um, and make it a lot more uh, collaborative and incorporative. So another way we mentioned in the last video, but another way that you can kind of make it collaborative is by doing group work. Now, when you do group work, you don't have to incorporate the entire group as one single group. You can have smaller teams of people and the, the, the kind of idea would be for the teams to try to make sure that they are accomplishing a goal. So something that uh, we do in classes occasionally is if they are doing hanging on the side of the wall so it's a lot of this pulling action again 
and it's more towards an endurance side of stuff. So you would be, you'd get one person hanging on the side of a wall in groups of three. So out of the three, one person against on the wall, and they cannot come off unless one of their other teammates gets onto the wall. And they have to do that for 10 minutes. So you can spend as much time as you like on the wall. So you can spend two minutes, usually towards uh, at the beginning, the time is longer. But uh, you know, you spend a minute on the on the wall, and then you can switch and have a rest. And somebody else in your team would be then taking over. But you have to make sure that someone has to get on before you get off. Now, uh, obviously, when it gets to the close towards like the ten minute mark, uh, that, that amount of time you spend on the wall is going to reduce down to like ten seconds. So you spend ten seconds on the wall. Your teammate gets up, you get off, you rest, and then the next teammate gets on the other person gets off. And essentially, all it's doing is the groups are having the goal of a 10 minute hang group challenge with, you know, in triples. And it's usually a lot of fun, it works really well. And everybody has this kind of group kind of uh, vibe to them all, uh, because they've all got this common goal. And they're working together, they get to rest, and they, you know, and then they get to work. And it's a lot of fun. Another thing to think about is you could put people in pairs and get them working together. So if one, you could get one person doing pull-ups and working on the, the primary goal of the challenge. So for this, for strength and conditioning, upper body pulling, the, the main idea is to do pull-ups. But you could be working in teams of two where uh, your partner is having to do perhaps a uh, chair position against the wall or a plank position um, or something uh, not related to pulling. Uh, so they're kind of resting, they're resting their arms. So in chair position, they would be resting their arms, ready to do the work, but they are still working their legs. Once you've done your work on the bar, it doesn't matter what it is, your partner then stands up, gets over onto the bar, you then have to do the, the chair position and you switch places. And again, this makes this a collaborative work. So if one of these things sucks more than the other, so if the person doing the chair position is really suffering, they want you to, to hurry up a little bit. So that means you've got to be focused and not dawdle because they are suffering if you spend a lot more time on it. And similarly, the other way. So it becomes this kind of co collaborative goal to make sure you get all the work done effectively. So overall in this video, the idea is that we want to try and incorporate everybody within the group, no matter their ability um, and their skill level. You're not trying to make things competitive because that will alienate certain groups and demographics of people that don't want to be uh, competitive unless they are specifically going into classes that they know are competitive, then that's fine. But for this, if the idea is strength and conditioning with learning how to do the pull-ups and in the, the group is a movement parkour kind of training, don't make it competitive, collaborative.